Today we talk about one of the most hated processes in the welding industry, aluminum stick rod. Now look, I guess I speak for myself when I say I really don't like welding with these things. To me, it's like the hardest thing to get going, get lit, get started, get running. It's like stirring a cold pool of molasses on ice skates, it just sinks through and the ice breaks. You guys get it. These rods are usually kind of inconsistent when it comes to welding and God forbid it actually stops, which it really does like to do. And then it doesn't really like to start back up again. And I just, I just don't know why you just make my life so difficult when there are so much better methods to welding aluminum like TIG welding or MIG welding. Why on earth would you even bother with these things? Well, it's because you're probably in a pinch. You don't always have everything that you need to weld something pretty and it's not always clean enough to weld on. That's where this stuff is going to come in handy. I've got a couple coupons here. We're going to do a little bit of cross-sectional cut and etch and I haven't welded a whole lot of these rods. So what we're going to do is we're going to play with the different polarities, weld a couple sides, do some cross-sectional etching, find out which one did the best. I've got some of these illuminator rods and these are general purpose rods. I found these at the local weld supply they say they're just good for welding <laughs> good for welding aluminum which is what we're doing so that's perfect 75 to 130 amps for these eighth inch rods so that's where we're going to be setting the Everlast Typhoon 230, the old stallion. Uh, it's a TIG and stick welding machine like any other. We've got this machine set up for DC positive stick. We are going to swap that to negative and even run the AC polarity for stick that this Typhoon is capable of. And we also want to see the biggest difference in the why aluminum is so inconsistent when welding with stick is because there's not a whole lot of preheat involved if you don't preheat it, right? It always starts off cold and finishes hot. We got to get the metal at a nice base point before we can even think about welding it. So let's get into all of those things and see how everything performs as far as penetration with a cross-sectional cut and etch. We're going to go about tacking this thing first. And what I really hate about these electrodes is the fact that whenever you try to strike an arc with it, they burn back so quick that it, it stops itself. And then it forms that little layer of glass over the tip that makes you have to try to tap the rod and then it's so fragile, all the flux goes everywhere and it's just a, it's just a pain in the butt. And it just does not like to be relit very easily either. Hate it. Oh, that landed on my pants. Oh, that was hot. Ah! That was a hot molten bugger right on my thigh. Think I got it? Oh my goodness. It's so fragile. It hates me. It's personal. So now it hears me talking a little smack and it wants to work a little bit better. Maybe the metal is a little heated up now that I've put some tacking on it. I hate you. Let me know if you guys have a hard time welding these aluminum, doing any type of aluminum stick welding. I'm, I'm hoping it's not just me. Finally, all that's tacked together, but again, I think it gets a little bit warmer and even makes the rod easier. So it might be worth doing the old stab and warm up trick. Got to preheat everything around here. God, what a mess. Now we've got our X piece here. This is where we're going to get all four of our welds on this one and two more welds on this one. The first weld is going to be what I think is probably most people's problem when they attempt to make this weld and that is welding on this aluminum completely cold. We've got to give it some preheat but I am going to do a cold weld no preheat at all and we're just going to run this bead nice and flat and then we'll cut the cross-sectional etch out compare it to the one with the preheat. Oh, we did pretty good on the start. Not bad, you can see this rod just like stirring a bunch of molten glass around. I don't know, there's so much action going on. The rod burns so quick, trying to keep up with something of an arc length that you really can't even see because of all that glassy slag. It's all over the weld. Get this end cleaned up. Sugar's definitely warm now. Just doing some circles, just doing some motion. The plate seems warmer now, and that definitely seems to make things smoother. We didn't have any of that smoothness at the beginning of this weld. Let's take a closer look. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, that's pretty lame. I'll have to put that back on. One other thing I don't really like about aluminum stick welding is it looks like 
At least I've never been able to make it look pretty. Everything happens so quick, it's just hard to really get a, a hone in on things, on making things look pretty aesthetically pleasing. You can see our restart's pretty high. The weld's on there, right? We've got a weld on there, it's mostly the same size. Yeah, kinda. Might be a little bit of a stretch. Now again, we didn't have any preheat. We had a little bit more heat towards the end since we had already put a weld on it, had to make a restart. We'll see if that's gonna affect anything on penetration when we do this other side. That's pretty hot. So we can go ahead and just start this other weld. Got the bit of preheat now. Let's see if it lights up the rod any easier too. We're even gonna add a little preheat to the rod by sticking it and giving that little stick and letting that current run through it'll warm that up a little bit and to break it loose started up a lot easier that time I'm really just smothering this thing I'm trying to go slow while that rod burns fast and as you can see that rod's just disappearing putting a lot more of a drag angle on it seems to help me Stay in front of that slag, but I gotta hold a really close arc length. It just feels like that electrode is just vanishing in my hand. It's starting to look a little bit better. Let's go for the tie-in right on our crater. Just give it a moment, you know. Snap it loose. Boom. Ah. Oh my lanta. It's just a pool. It's a pool of stuff. So hard to see the edges of your puddle. Giving that rod a little bit of preheat and having the already the metal having a lot more heat into it definitely made that rod feel a little bit more like it was supposed to be, at least acting right. When your slag is really tough to come off, it usually tells you you've probably done something a little crappy. I just absolutely hate this process. We had some good weld here. I think we're gonna get a really good cross-section piece out of that because this on the back end doesn't look like we have anything even worth testing. Didn't know where that metal was going. It was just stirring like a liquid pool of garbage. What would you do in that situation? You'd clean it out as best you can. Get all that slag out that is trapped in the corners, probably with a wire brush, wire wheel, and even maybe some sort of grinding to get that smoothened up if you had to put some multi-pass welds on there. This process is just an enigma to me. Let me know guys if y'all have some better techniques for it. As far as preheating stuff, it does definitely help. Now I know there's gonna be some comments, if you preheat it, you could anneal the aluminum and make it softer or whatever. Now annealing's not gonna take place until like closer to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you just put a little 200 degree preheat on stuff, it'll make welding this a lot easier. We've got DC positive, which is the side we just ran. We're gonna run DC negative on this side and then AC on this side. Okay, so now I've gone and swapped the polarities over to DC straight or DCEA, direct current electrode negative. I'm not really sure what that's gonna end up doing to this weld. That's why we're gonna do a cross-sectional edge on it. The preheat is still there from the previous two welds. This rod did say that it matches one, three, five, and six series aluminum. I don't know what I'm welding on, so that's why we went for a general purpose electrode. That's one of the biggest things to welding aluminum and having a successful weld, or at least tie in well, is that you use the right electrode for the aluminum that you're running, which will also tell you the polarity that you're doing, which this one says DC positive. We're gonna try DC negative. Preheat the electrode a little bit. Good golly, I don't even know if this is worth attempting anymore. I don't need to see much here. That's just not, that's not gonna be good for anybody. Oh my goodness. Ah! Just hear a bunch of tinging and pinging. That was destructive. That's not weld quality at all. I don't even know if I can clean that. You know, I've actually never run that rod on DC negative. Cause you know, you're always just supposed to run the rod the way it's supposed to be run. I can't even get the slag off of this thing. I do not recommend it. We got some weld to kind of play with or test, I think. There's still something. There's something underneath that slag. Let me know why that's such a big difference, you know. I don't deal with this electrode that often. So those of you that do, maybe explain to me the results that we're seeing. We gotta finish the weld. I don't think it's worth showing, but there's weld there. That stuff was freaking vile. If it smells like cancer, it's probably cancer.
Golly, they don't do no overhead welding with that sucker. That is enough of that. You know, that reminded me a lot of the video that we did at Avacor Benzel whenever we put the wrong polarity on the MIG process. All right, enough of this baloney. What an absolute disaster. That is an ugly weld, my friends. Let's switch over the ace. Golly, we could see a bunch of penetration though. Good God almighty, I'd like to see what that cross-sectional electro look like. That's something. What an absolute horror episode this has turned out to be. We just got done welding the AC stick. We've got our balance set to 30%. Our AC frequency was at like 250. And it honestly had the best of both worlds there. It sucked on DCE and it sucked on DCEP. If you guys know any people that do aluminum stick for a living, we need to start a foundation because they need help. This sucks. However, on our DCEP weld, we did get a, some solid inch on it. And what we're gonna do now is try to find at least a spot that we can get a decent cross-sectional etch out of and get some, get some results. Now this was a freaking wild experiment and honestly I'm not super proud of any of the results. I really don't like welding with this rod. I just never had a lot of success with it. But we can clearly see a lot of pretty fascinating results if you ask me. If we look at this, this is the top version. This is our alternating current and then our DCEN is this side over here. The top and this side you can see just have this crazy amount of penetration into the quarter inch. The DCEN with the most, it's even tying into the other weld nuggets on the other sides. So the DCEN is definitely getting the most penetration. That tracks as far as aluminum goes. If you're welding on with TIG, DCEN is the penetrating side of things, whereas AC is the cleanliness side of things, which might be why on the DCEN side it was so violent and we had so much spatter and it's not as cooled or calmed down. Speaking of cooled, we can see the piece with no preheat on it, guys. Check that out. No preheat at all. You can see that the weld nugget is the smallest of all of them. I can even see a little bit of incomplete fusion right at the root of that fillet weld. Not only that, but there's cavities in the weld itself full of slag. So we have slag inclusions, and on the other side, we did even have a bit of porosity. Our DCEP is this one here, now at the very top. It is our most consistent size weld nugget as far as keeping it to the quarter inch size plate and a quarter inch size fillet weld. And I do see that we're tying into every piece of metal as far as the two sides and into the root. So you can see why it could be a, it's still a really good process to use if, if you have to use it. And I mean, if you absolutely have to use it. Direct current electrode positive and preheating on not only the piece of metal that you're working with, but the rod itself. Let us know guys down below what your tricks are for welding this stuff. Cause Lord knows I don't have any. We'll see you guys on the next weld. Son of a biscuit. Okay. Ow. That sucker's hot now. Whoa. It's just a pain in the butt.